In this tutorial, we're going to learn about option sets. We'll learn about what they are, why they're useful, and how we use them. Option sets allow you to have a static list of choices, or options, that are global to your app. We use option sets for storing things that we know ahead of time, like the days of the week, menu tabs in your nav bar, or anything else that can be predefined. Unlike data types, option sets aren't stored in your app's database, so they're faster to use, and in some cases, easier. To create an option set, we navigate to our data tab, option sets. This is where you can create, update, and delete option sets like you would for regular custom types. Let's say in our app we wanted to have access to a list of colors, so we'll name our option set accordingly. And just like that, we've created an option set. With it, we get two sections, one called options and one for attributes. Options are where we type in the options for our list, and attributes allow for adding different types of fields to the option. Let's go ahead and add our list of colors as options into this option set. With these added, we have our static list of colors that is globally accessible throughout our app. This way of storing information is already a huge help, but we can take it a step further by adding other attributes. We'll click Create New Attribute and add other properties about this list of colors that we may want to have. For example, we'll add an image attribute so each color can be represented with a photo. We'll also add another attribute of type number and name it order for any extra sorting that we may want to do with these options. By default, our option set is sorted from the order in which you add an option. And if you want to change the initial order, you can move the options up and down. Additionally, we modify each option by clicking modify attributes. Here, we can add to the option a number value for its own sort order and upload a photo to represent its color. I've gone ahead and filled out attributes to each option. Now, let's take a look at how we can access option sets from anywhere in our app. The first way we can access options is through the Get an Option data source. If we create a text box on the page, we use Get an Option to get all of our option sets. Notice we only have one, so that's all we'll return. When we choose the option, we can either return the list and all its options, or just get the individual option. However, when we select an individual option, we get an issue. Since this is a text box, we need to evaluate to text. And right now, we evaluate to the option itself. When we click More, we can get the display attribute, which will evaluate the text and give us the individual name. Next, we'll make a repeating group and set the type of content to our option set. We can do this because our repeating group can only display a list of things, and our option set is exactly that. When we go to set our data source, note how we are immediately recommended to use all colors. This is by design, to make using option sets even easier. By selecting this, our repeating group will retrieve all of our options in our option set. We'll then add a text element to the first cell in our repeating group and get the current cell's colors display, which will return the name of each option. Then we'll add an image element next to this text, setting our image source to current cell's colors photo. When we preview, we can see all of the options in our option set with their names and photos. By default, our repeating group is displaying the order of our option set with how we entered the options earlier. But we added another attribute called order to give us more control. We can utilize this attribute in our repeating group by adding a sorted operator to our data source and sort by the order attribute. Now when we refresh the page, we see the repeating group being sorted by the order numbers that each option has for a little more control. One of the most useful elements for option sets is the dropdown element. Dropdowns have two ways of accessing a list. You can statically type a list in the element itself or dynamically retrieve one. If we change this to dynamic choices, we are asked to enter what type of choices. Here we'll see our fields and data types, but also our option sets. So we'll click colors. We then need to set the choices source. And like we've seen, we can easily get all colors. Finally, we'll set the option caption as we need to retrieve each option's name. We'll click more after current option and get its display attribute. Let's preview our app to see that our dropdown is showing our options from our option set. Great. We can even add option sets as custom fields in our data types. In our data type sub tab, we'll click on user and add a new custom field called favorite color. And the field type will be our option set colors. In our user app data, we can modify the user and see how this field works. 
Because it's an option set, and because an option set is a static list, we are given that list to choose from. A common place where we would do searches is in conditional statements, but since option sets don't read from the database, they're faster to execute. Here's a text element that changes the font color based on the dropdown value. The conditionals on this text element are comparing the dropdown value to the option set. Since the dropdown values use an option set, we'll get the options recommended to us to make it easier. Since option sets are global, we can even use them to compare things in workflow conditionals. With this input and button added to the page, we can make a workflow that compares the text we type in to one of the options in our option set to show a pop-up. You can easily get more complex with these examples as you continue to build using option sets. While it's technically possible to get many of the same benefits from using data types, you should consider option sets for a few reasons. One, option sets don't read from the database, which means your app will run faster wherever you use them. Two, it's quick to add new options and change existing ones to be more reusable. And three, they can be accessed from anywhere in your app. The things to keep in mind about option sets are that they're not private, so we don't want to put sensitive data into them. And when we do update an option set, we have to update the page in development mode or deploy a new update to live to see the change. This is the core difference between option sets and data types, and if you wanted real-time updates, you would need to use a data type instead. To illustrate option sets in practice, we have our recipe sharing application that we built in our crash course, Build Your First App. In this app, users upload recipes to share and upvote with others. But until now, we had no way of categorizing these recipes. To solve this, we made an option set called Recipe Categories, which contained our preset list of dessert types that we wanted to tag them by. We then added this option set as a custom field to the recipe data type. So now every time a user posts a new recipe, we save the category along with it. To complete this process, we added a dropdown to our recipe submission form containing our option set for our users to choose from. Then we store the value of this dropdown in our action when we create a new recipe. Finally, this is reflected in the repeating group on our index page, where we display the category like so. We've seen how option sets can be used throughout your app, how they're faster to read than searching the database, and that they're globally accessible. By using them for situations where you know your list ahead of time, building your app will become even easier. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out bubble.io academy.